onset. I actually grew up dyslexic, ADD, um, struggled through school. I'm a nonlinear thinker. I'm creative, I'm outside the box. Most people can't really understand me. And when I was younger, I was the youngest of four. I had a fantastic family upbringing, but I had a lot of challenges and I struggled. And I lost all of my confidence because inside the traditional schools, they just don't understand thinkers and people who think differently. So us dyslexics, or us that are on the short bus, um, you lose a lot of confidence when you struggle and when you don't understand like everyone else. And it was very difficult for me. When I got older, and most of you guys will meet my father because it is his 81st birthday and we're celebrating here in Vegas, so he'll be here. So my dad was a researcher. He came from a background of really looking at the data and so what he did is he started to look at where did I excel? What did I do that was different? And he helped me understand that being different was okay. Now understand, I graduated high school in 1989, so I never actually was part of the high school. I was in the special ed program all throughout my whole career, of school career. Um, so my dad realized that I was creative. I cooked once. So clearly I was creative. Mm -hmm. I was innovative, I had something to prove, and I thought differently. Now, he helped me understand that that's okay. We don't have to be working in the same traditional ways that everyone else did. So the first thing I was like, Dad, what the fuck do I do? I can't take those SATs. Like, I've gotta figure out something. Like, what do I do? I, I, I can't go to college. And he's like, absolutely you can. So I went to Johnson & Wales and went to culinary school. I got my culinary degree, two years, got out, and the first thing was, okay, now what do I do? The one thing I always realized is I was a quick learner. If you showed me something visually or you told me something, I could understand it. So I got a job in sales, as we all do, because that's what happens when you're creative and thoughtful and you know how to connect with people and understand them and try to understand the value. And I always was a, you know, a pleaser of sorts. So my first job was selling a flip book of what the internet was. So 1995, I happened to get a job with this company called Microsoft. I was 20 something years old, had no clue who Microsoft was. I kind of stepped into a very big opportunity. But I started selling. Great job, good things happened. AOL came knocking at my door, offered me a great position. I was like, why not? Let me go try this out. Went and worked with AOL, got to learn. But, you know, I was pretty negative, very sad within myself because I wasn't great at what I was doing. I just was beating myself up. I wasn't confident. I didn't feel great about myself. But I knew I was good. I was okay. Well then, I went to AOL and I learned a lot about how they think differently. They were doing these deals that were the first of the kind. So, preview travel, $22 million deal, a strategic partnership. I would watch the way that they would do the deals, and of course, I was such a junior person that I never even could talk to the people in the room. I would just look at the press release, to be honest with you. But it was innovative, it was different. Well, I got recruited from that job to take another job. I went over, started a company, it was number two, and it was 24-7 media. Now, this is an old school, traditional radio uh, players that were getting into the internet. So when I had shown up there, I realized that it was an environment that I was the most junior person in the room. How am I going to hell am I going to get my numbers? How am I going to start to build myself? I wasn't confident. I wasn't strong. So one night, I came home from work. I was a little bit tipsy, I'm going to be honest with you. Definitely something going on. And I just started to create. 
and I outlined this incredible strategic partnership that was innovative, it was different, and it took two big platforms, AT&T and a company called MapQuest. And I started to scope out the vision of what I wanted to create. Now, I knew that my team was not gonna be on board with this opportunity. So what did I do? I sold it anyway. I went to AT&T, sold them through on the vision, went to MapQuest, sold them on the vision, and guess what? It turned out to be a huge success and the first of its kind. I walked into the door of my management team, showed them a signed IO on both sides, and asked them, can we do this? The first thing that they said was, absolutely not. This is outside of our box. This does not fit in. We're going public. Gail, no way. <laughs> Second thing I did was show them the signed IO. Like, well, now can we do it? Here's the money behind it. And guess what? They hustled, and they made it happen. And we proved a new model. Well, as any good salesperson, the first thing I did was making like nothing. Everyone was making tons of money. My bonus check was gonna be more than my salary. So of course, I walk into my boss's door, knock on it, I'm like, Greg, listen, my salary and my bonus don't really match. Like, can we do something here? Like, you know, can you give me a raise? Can you bring me up to at least a different level? He's like, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm like, why? He's like, do it again. If you're good at this, go out and show me you're good at this. So of course, first thing I did was start to create again. Thinking outside the box, how do I bring value? Okay, I went out, got my second deal. I walked in with tears down my eyes, crying, bringing in my second contract for $2.6 million. I changed the game of that business. And it was a big breakthrough for me because it was the first time I realized I was exceptional at my job. My mindset finally changed. I went from being someone that just didn't believe that change was possible, that I was always stuck in this persona of myself as not being confident, being that short kid, you know, the kid on the bus that never really got to the other side. Well, when I found my confidence, through innovating, my next job was working for another company at the next level, at the next level. What I quickly realized is innovation, when done right, gave me opportunities to meet with the chairman and the CEO and the executive leadership team. And guess what? When they needed something to talk about, they were calling me into the room because I was the expert of innovation. I was the expert of change in all of these organizations. And I realized that there's another room out there. It's like the private room that nobody gets to be a part of. And it's called the executive team, and I wanted that. So I slowly, with this positive mindset and change of my perspective in myself, went from somebody that dyslexic, barely graduated high school, to college, to now sitting on the sea level Because every single time, there was an opportunity for innovation, I raised my hand and I got in front of it. And I brought it to my organizations because change and innovation, people are afraid of. How many people in this room have heard someone say, oh, I can't do that. I don't know how to work a computer. I don't know how to do that because they're afraid. They're afraid of change. You guys are sitting in one of the greatest opportunities I've seen change is happening to the sports field in a way that is going to be transformative and you're seeing it from the baseline. So one thing I realized quickly is with a growth mindset, I could actually do so much more. I always wanted to be at that executive level. I always wanted to be in the room where the real conversations were happening. But it was a process and it's been a process. What I realized is that there were five key areas that can really help you bring value to an organization. One was finding others that believe in change. Others that have a growth mindset within your organization. 
Second thing is bring the data. I generally like to bring the deals because that's where the money is, but bring the data, bring the money, and I will tell you, they will pay attention to you. The next, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to shut off that mindset in your head, which is the negative self-talk. I will say today, I still battle with negative self-talk. I am in an investment bank that does the biggest deals in digital, and it's an all boys club. And for me to stand there and want it and fight for it, and now being part of the private equity field, and now I'm doing things I could never have imagined. But I constantly have to stop myself from beating myself up because it's a mean person in my head that stops me. And the possibilities, if I could just shut that off more often than not, is the positive mindset and what you can do is just incredible. And then the last is always think about what and how you see change for yourself. Visualize success. On my desktop, on my phone, I have my vision board. I see myself now delivering that, not only just to myself, but to my organization and to the growth of the organization. When you're in front of that and when you can see that, it's, it's where I think um, my belief in myself comes from and my belief for my company as well. And then I would say out of everything I've learned, the real question is, do you want change in your organization? Do you want to be that change agent? Do you want to be that person that can make it happen? And do you really want what's on the other side of that wall that's stopping you? Thanks for having me.